a man by the name of Hosea, a holy man of God, joined to a woman called Gomer, who's a harlot, prostitute, paid by her lovers to lie with them. And as he sees these three children born and the home being shattered because of a prostitution, he wants to buy her back because he's commanded by God to love her. And you can imagine him standing outside the brothel in a lineup where other men are paying for her affection. She must have been an attractive kind of young woman to merit this kind of a, of a profession. And he's standing in line, waiting to buy her back for half the price of a slave and a day's rations. You can imagine the conversations amongst the customers going on. But some rather saintly person comes to Jose and says, you know what, I'm puzzled. You're a holy man of God. You're married to a prostitute like this. How do you justify this? Hosea probably said, you know, I'll be delighted to answer your question if you will first answer mine. How can a holy God like that be joined to an adulterous nation like ours? With empty ears, the poet said, how odd of God to choose the Jews. Yet how odder still are those who reject whom God chose, is what he went on to say. Why didn't he choose Rome? Great imperial majesty what a means to reveal his own majesty greece great philosophers the big three socrates plato aristotle made life more confusing for millions after their coming after them <laughs> talking about shadows and reality and caves and metaphors and summum bonum and all this kind of stuff if philosophy and theology ask the same questions why didn't you choose Greece? Made it easier for the world to understand. Why didn't you choose Babylon? Think of the splendor of Babylon. No, it is not no Rome. It is not Greece. It is not Babylon. He chose that tiny little nation that Rome enslaved, the Greeks mocked, and the Babylonians ultimately bullied. You are the apple of my eye, he said. You know, that's what it says in the English. There's no such phraseology in the Hebrew. In the Hebrew, it actually says, you're the little maiden of my eye. Do you know who the little maiden of your eye is, sir? That person whom you love so dearly that when she comes closer and closer and closer to you, if she looked into your eyeballs, she will see her own reflection. She is that little maiden of your eye. And God says to them, come close, come close, come even closer. Look into my eyeballs. You are that little maiden in my eye. How odd of God to choose the Jews how other still are those who reject whom God chose. You today, if you know him, are loved by him, not because of any merit that you and I displayed. This truth of God's chesed, loving kindness, unmerited favor, divine mercy, I want you to hear me now. It is unique to the Judeo Christian faith. You will never find this in the pantheistic religions of the world. You will not find it in Islamic teaching. In Islam, you earn. Your good deeds will be have to outweigh your bad deeds. In the pantheistic religions, you pay. Every life is a rebirth. Every birth is a rebirth where you pay the karmic consequence of your previous life. In other words, when you finally shake off karma, you have earned it. When you finally enter paradise in the Islamic world, you have earned it. Not so when the father runs out of the home and sees that little boy of his returning all messed up and all ruined and the older boy living in the household could not figure this out. Do you know what it means in Eastern narrative for a father who has been disrespected and abused by the son, by the son taking the right to his wealth even before the father had passed away. The son's request was tantamount to saying, I want you as if you are dead. Give me my portion of the wealth. And the boy takes off. How many Eastern fathers do I know of when that son returned would leave the confines of their home and run to meet him? Not so. That son would have to come running into the household, fall flat at the feet of his father, clutch the ankles and feet and beg and beg and beg for mercy. This father runs out, wraps his arms around him and embraces him and finds him now to be alive, though he has once said, that is chesed, divine, loving, kindness and mercy undeserved by that boy.